Good morning, everyone. You can tell we are back at Factory Butte, if you happen to check out my content from Utah a few months ago, and the conditions are much better than last time. Didn't get any cloud coverage the last time I was here. Uh, it's not as cold. I believe it was 10 degrees the morning I shot here last time. I uh, was shooting last night, but I didn't film a whole lot of what I was shooting because I really just wanted to find a composition, lock it in, and make sure that's what I wanted. But today, I'm going to be shooting the same composition, and I'm going to show you how to focus stack from start to finish. So I'm going to show you how to focus stack in the field, and then we're going to take it into Lightroom and Photoshop, and I'll show you how to focus stack once we get into those editing suites and all the magic of this morning finishes. So let me show you the composition that I'm working with and explain it and how to focus stack the image in the field, and then we'll take it back into Photoshop, and I'll show you how to focus stack it in there. So let's get started. So here's our composition this morning. And as you can tell, I have this foreground element that is slightly out of focus. Uh, and I'm using that to block all of the tracks that are in Factory Butte that I talked about in my last video. That'll link at the top of the screen if you're interested in why that's happened. And I'm just using that element to make my composition a little bit more interesting. But because of that, I need to focus stack this really cool shawl soil so that you can actually see all the detail in it. So what I'm gonna do, and the plane of focus is a little bit odd, so on the left-hand side, this soil is closer to the lens. And on the right-hand side, this soil is further away. So what I'm gonna do to be extra careful is take a shot focused right there, and I'm using a two-second timer on a tripod, of course. And then I'm gonna focus at the further spot, take a shot. And then I'm gonna focus on the background and take a shot. And then I'll show you that plane of focus um, right now should be on the screen and then we're going to take these photos after the sunrise back into Photoshop and see how they turned out and we'll uh, get those focus stacked and you guys should be on your way to making your first focus stacked image so I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching hey everyone as you can tell we are now back in the office and before we jump into Lightroom and Photoshop I just wanted to add a little bit more direction that I forgot to include when I was out in the field and it's answering the question that you probably especially if you're just getting into focus stacking are going to have which is how many photos do I take? How many focus points do I need for a specific image? I think the best way to go about this and to figure it out is if you can't just guess, um, there's definitely a way to really know how many focus points you're going to need. Uh, and that is to focus on the nearest object or the furthest object, depending on how you're going to navigate through your image. In this case, I'm just going to use the nearest object as an example. So focus on that nearest object and then zoom in on the back of your camera using that magnification tool. And then you're going to work your way through wherever you think the next point should be. And then once you reach that point, focus on that point. Okay. And then you're going to just continue doing that through your image. And that'll give you a general idea of how many spots you need to take focus points at, whether it's five or seven, or in our case, it was only three, but you're going to notice in our example that I'm about to show you, I actually probably should have taken one that's at the center of the ridge. There's definitely some blurriness there. It's not going to harm our example, but if I wanted to improve the photo, I should have taken one more image for that center focus. Regardless, let's jump into Lightroom and Photoshop now and start working on this image. All right, so now that we're in Lightroom, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that all of your images are roughly the same exposure uh, and have the same color balance and everything like that. If there is shifts between them, this is the time to either fix your color balance or your exposure so that they all match uh, before we go into focus stacking. These images are already all set, so I'm just gonna select my three images. Uh, you can do that by holding Shift or Control, and I'm gonna right click and go to Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. All right, so now that our images have loaded into Photoshop, the first thing we're gonna want to do is order them with however we plan on doing our focus stack. In my case, I'm gonna order them from front to back, meaning the top of the image in my layers is gonna be the closest focus point. So right now my top image is the background, my next image looks like it is the foreground, and then our middle image is this area over here. So that's exactly how we want it. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is go to Edit Auto Align Layers. This is what you should always do. You should use this. <laughs> Definitely align your photos after selecting all three of them uh, so that they're all matched up because what will happen when you're focus stacking is a lot of lenses do what's called focus breathing. And you can see there's a little bit of shift between these images, but typically Photoshop can do that one pretty well. What it doesn't do well is auto blending these to focus stack automatically. And anyone that recommends this to you, 
honestly, I probably wouldn't trust because I've never had success auto blending my layers. They never come out. Uh, I'm just going to show you really quick. Let's go to auto blend layers, uh, stack images. I'll even do seamless tones and colors. Hit OK. I'm going to let this go. And, and again, I already know what it's going to look like, and it just never looks good. So let's look at it when it's done, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It is now done focus stacking our image. Uh, and you're going to tell that at first it looks pretty good. You can get an idea of that it masked here and that it masked here for this background image and that it masked here for this image. So let's actually zoom in though and get an idea of how bad this, this, this worked. You can tell right here that in our mask, which I'm going to turn on and off, for some reason it included all of these areas um, and that just doesn't look good. Now I will admit that this image is definitely trickier than your average image for focus stacking. And I think most of the time, and I'll talk about this a little bit at the end about other types of focus stacks, because we're about to talk about this image. And this one is tricky because our image goes from very sharp in the front to having a very big fall off. Uh, let's just undo this really quick so that I can go back to the normal images. So the amount of focus distance between where this is to the background, there's a huge shift in focus here. Typically in a lot of the focus stacks you're gonna take, and again, I'm gonna talk about this at the end and show you some examples, is you're gonna, you're gonna move through your image gradually and blending those images together will be a lot easier. In this particular one, we have to get a very good hard line between the particular foreground and the background. So even when I've done the auto align for Photoshop or auto blend in Photoshop for even the easier images, it just never gives me the results I want. It looks okay at first when I'm zoomed out, but as soon as I zoom into any of those details, it just doesn't look very good. So now that we have our image set up, things are auto aligned, meaning everything should be in the exact same spots. Let's zoom in and take a look. Looks pretty good. Yep. Great. The first thing I'm going to want to do in my image is draw guides for where the focus shifts. This will just give me a general idea of where I know where the focus starts to shift to the next image. So it really doesn't matter. We know that the background image is everything from down here and beyond. So really the only focus shift in the, our particular image is going to be between these two, uh, between the ridge here. So I'm just turning this layer on and off, which I actually have a shortcut for, which is control Q for me. Um, and you can, you can turn that on by going to edit keyboard shortcuts if you want to enable that or not. So I'm just going to keep doing this and get a general idea. It looks like it's about in focus right here and then the focus shifts here. And this little middle area where it's still a bit blurry is why I was telling you that we probably should have taken a third image for that middle area so that it was in focus. That's okay though. We're just going to continue on. It's not the end of the world. And so I'm just going to, if you don't have these um, turned on, you just need to go to view rulers and I'm just going to drag a general idea of where it shifts, which should be about there. Technically, the line is more of a diagonal, um, but this will give me a general idea of where the focus starts to shift between my two images. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is select my object. And in this case, again, this is going to vary depending on what kind of uh, focus stack you're, you're going to do. It will be easier in other images. And this one particularly, we just have to be careful with the the fall off between this ridge and the background. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to come over here and create a layer mask. I'm going to come up here to my object selection tool, which is under the quick selection tool. Um, and I'm going to use the object selection tool. And then I'm just going to drag and I have it set to lasso and I'm just going to select this and it should do a pretty good job at basically automatically selecting where our ridge line is for us. There we go. Uh, I'm not too worried about this little area down here. I can hold shift and drag again and have it add that probably. Uh, good enough for now. I'm not, again, too worried. Once I have that selection, I'm going to go up here to select and mask. And then I'm going to, it's going to show me an overlay of that. I'm going to zoom in and check out how much, how well it did on our ridge line here. And it did a pretty good job. So there's going to be a few spots that I'm just going to just quickly brush in for example sake. Um, I don't have to be too concerned here. This is all stuff I can change later. That one doesn't look good. Let's undo that. Uh, that one doesn't look good either. 
Um, let's see. Just trying to get a better idea. Let's try the add tool. Yeah, that looks pretty good. There we go. Much better. And I'm just going to go through and make sure that the ridge here is selected pretty well. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is something we're going to adjust at the end after we start painting in our layer mask ourselves. But this will give you a general idea of how strong this is. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm not going to worry too much about anything over here. Um, the feather and stuff is all things that we can do with our brushes. And I'm going to hit OK. And now we have that selection. I'm just going to come in and fill with our foreground color, which is black, onto our mask. And now I'm going to deselect. And now it has masked out our layer. As you can tell, I turn the mask off and everything looks sharp. I turn the mask on. Uh, that's OK. So all I'm going to do is invert the mask by holding Control i and what's important here is I could have done this a different way. I could have created a black mask and it's just filled with white, but it leads us to the same thing. As long as the only thing, basically all you want to have is the only part that's in focus, you want to be painted with white, which is exactly what we have here. This part is the only part that's in focus and it is painted with white. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off this layer and we're gonna do the exact same thing for this layer. So this time around, I will invert this mask. So now it's black. Um, actually, no, we're going to do it just the same way because you want to always use the sharpest part of the image for your selection. Because for example, if I turn uh, this layer off and I try to make this selection using the blurry layer like this, it's going to have a harder time seeing. Uh, obviously, don't pay attention to that. It's going to have a harder time figuring out where that edge is. So we're going to want to have this layer on and do exactly what we did the last time. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to use our object lasso tool here, come down and select basically like that. Hopefully it selects the edge pretty well. And I'm not going to bore you again and go into the select and mask feature. We're just going to use this edge for now and I'll show you how to fix those edges a little bit. And so all I'm going to do is I'm using a shortcut called Shift F5 that brings up this fill. I'm going to fill with fill with black, and again, because of the way we're doing this, I'm just going to invert it so that everything in this layer is white. So what you're going to notice is our edges here are not looking very good. But I kind of wanted to show you without using that Select and Mask tool what you can do to fix that. But for now, I'm just going to finish getting my image ready. If I turn this layer back on, you can see that everything here shifts. Something I'm going to want to do, though, is I'm going to want to select uh, this top layer. And I'm going to want to make sure that our mask here in the middle is also filled with white in that area. It'll make a little bit more sense in a, further through the tutorial. But I'm just going to fill that area with the background color since that is white. So now you can see my mask has shifted to white. The reason I'm doing that is because when I end up blending this top layer with the edge here. So I'm going to turn off our middle layer. When I'm blending and fixing this edge, I don't want our middle layer getting in the way of the blend between this image and this image. And by filling the entire bottom half with white like we just did, it'll be turned off. So that, or it'll be turned on, excuse me, so that that edge also shows up. So it'll make a little bit more sense as we go through the tutorial. Now that I have both of my images selected, so this is now our foreground focus. And I would say this is our middle ground focus, this image here, so this area here. Uh, and then we have our background. So th the next thing I'm going to do is just go into both of these masks really quick and fill in those little areas at the bottom that didn't get filled in. This is going to be super fast. I'm just going to fill those with white, deselect. Same thing with this one. I'll turn this off. Come in, fill the bottom. And those just didn't get selected when I used that select in, uh, the object selection tool. Not too worried about that. So the next thing you're going to want to do uh, that will be tricky and definitely a little bit tedious 
is coming in here and fixing your edge. This is going to be the hardest and most important part of this focal blend. And it is what makes this particular image difficult is because the amount of blur between here and your background uh, is significant and trying to get a sharp edge between those is what is difficult. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what I do, but I'm not going to sit here and make you watch everything that I'm about to do. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off our middle layer so that I know I'm only working with our foreground layer. And I'm going to come in here and you can tell that these edges um, are definitely a little bit soft. Something you can do to see exactly where your mask is, is press your backslash button, which is above enter. And that'll show you this red outline of where our mask is. So I'm going to want to come in here, get a brush, and obviously not that big. And then I'm make sure your mask is selected and you want to paint back and forth between black and white. Let's bring our opacity up to hundred. Make sure that you have a soft brush selected. Let's bring that down. Uh, and you want a pretty small brush here. So if I paint it in like this, now this area is out of focus. So if I paint with black in this area, it's going to make it out of focus. If I paint with white, it's going to make it a little bit more in focus. All I really care about is this edge line. So, we're just going back and kind of tidying up that selection tool that we made before. And if you watch here, I'm going to paint in the areas that should be more sharp with white like this. And it's going to create a little bit of a blur. This is definitely something you're going to have to massage back and forth here. This area can, you can obviously tell is a little blurry. I'm going to actually turn my mask off and you can kind of tell that this area isn't perfectly in focus either which you might think is a bad thing, but in this particular case, if it was perfectly in focus, this would be even, even harder to blend together correctly. So it being a little bit out of focus isn't the end of the world. And I'm just going back and forth, and I'm going to just paint in white to those areas to get that ridge line looking better. You can definitely tell that this should be sharper in these areas, and I want to fix where this little bit of haze is on here. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth massage these edges. So I'm going to go through the image and do this throughout the whole image to kind of get that edge looking a little bit better. Uh, and then I'll catch you up when I'm done. So stay tuned. So I got my edge looking okay. It's not perfect, but for now it'll do. Uh, the next thing, and I want to make a correction. I accidentally uh, at one point painted in, here, I'll show you. I painted in too much of this bottom half um, for our top image. We definitely don't want that part to be in our image. So I'm just going to go back and fix that really quick by just filling with black, which is currently my background color. We're going to get rid of that. We can fix this in a little bit, but you definitely don't want that to be painted over uh, for this part. So just a little mistake I accidentally did in the haste of making this video. So now that we have both of our, our edges looking okay, uh, they're not perfect. The next thing we're going to want to do is make sure the blend between these two layers is decent. You can tell right here that this shift is not very good. So all I'm going to do is have my layer mask on and off here. So I'm going to turn this on and off to see where that focus shift is. And I'm using a shortcut, which is just control W. Again, you can add a shortcut by going to edit keyboard shortcuts to disable and enable my layer mask. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this. I'm actually going to turn off the actual layer and turn it back on to see where this is shifting. So I know that this middle image is more in focus right here. So I'm going to paint out with a big brush what's being shown here. So I'm just going to come in and again, I'm not worried about this area because this is all black anyways in my mask and just get this looking pretty good. And I'm gonna paint in white right here because this part is in focus for here. I'm gonna turn my mask off and it's looking pretty good. Like I said, there is definitely a shift right here. So let's get that painted in with black, not with white. Turn my mask back off, on rather, turn it off on. We can turn our overlay on. And this is looking pretty close. That's good enough. So we can actually get rid of our guide here. 
and you'll probably have more guides because you probably will take more images for your focus stack. I just have the one. And like I said before, I probably should have taken an image with this part in focus. Uh, it would have given me better results, but for example's sake, it's okay. So I'm noticing right here, this ridge line looks really bad. Let's see if we can fix that really quick. Um, let me see by turning this mask off. So it's definitely this image and let's see if we can fix. Oh yeah. So really quick, something I did while I was going through the whole image as I'm using a brush and I have about 50% hardness and I've already gone through and done this for a decent amount of the ridge, but this ridge just got revealed since we just fixed our mask between the two images. So you probably want to use a smaller one. And again, this is just going to be a tedious task. It's going to take some massaging until you get it about where you want it to get this right. I'm going to actually paint in this little piece here, paint out that. And you can see our edge is starting to show up a little bit better. And I'm just going back and forth, painting in black and white to get my edge looking. It doesn't have to look perfect, but it will show up more once you get it into add sharpening and all your other effects. So you want it looking pretty good. That looks much better than it did before. I'm not going to worry about all these other little spots for right this second. So that's pretty much the whole focus stack. So if we go through, we have our closer image here with this part in focus. Then we add our next part of the image. And remember, I filled all of this part with white so that it uses our middle image. But because of the way I have them stacked, this image is going to go on top of it to be in better focus. Anyways, the reason I do this is basically anytime I'm moving down anything that's below the top one, I also fill its entire part with white. Just makes it easier to blend everything together, specifically when you get to the point where you're trying to blend these two layers together. Uh, it'll just make your life a little bit easier. Then we have our background and everything is in focus. Okay, so I know that particular image was a little bit tedious, but I will admit it is not your standard focus stack. So I want to go back into Lightroom really quick and show you some examples of the focus stacks you'll likely be taking more often than not. I definitely take them more often than not. They are a lot easier to blend together. The concepts are the same, but we don't have to worry so much about that particular ridge line or having a ridge that needs to be exactly sharp for the stuff in the foreground and blend well into the background. So let's go into Lightroom really quick. And I have two examples. So I've actually done both of these in other videos, um, I, but I bring them up as examples. In this particular image, this image, we it's most in focus here. And then the next image will be most in focus in this area. And the next image is most in focus in this middle ground area. And then the last image is most in focus for the background. Obviously this is blown out, but I have an entire video on focus stacking just this particular image. And it's very simple. All that really happens is I use the lasso tool to go through the image, select this bottom half and use that as the focus, select the middle part, use that as a focus. There is no worrying about the edges between them. It blends together really well. And typically when you're shooting a focus stack, it's with a wide angle lens and the plane of focus from the bottom to top gradually shifts up rather than having a stark edge like we did with our example just now. Another type that you might get is one I just recently did on a live stream where this particular object right here is the closest and the next object is this object and it's just a little bit further away and then I have my background focus. And I'm going to link both of those videos up top and in the description down below. And again, I just wanted to give you more uh, sources of things that you can use to watch for different types of focus stacks. I genuinely think that this particular image uh, is probably something you'll encounter most of the time where you're gradually shifting through an image. Sometimes you might encounter an image where this foreground, the foreground object is slightly closer. Uh, let's let that load really quick. It's slightly closer than anything else. And then the, you might have an object in the background and this blended together pretty well. And I did it live on air again. This image was more difficult than it should have been just because we have to get that, that line perfectly in focus. Let's go back into Photoshop. This line between the two layers perfectly in focus between the two or to have just enough of a blur between them that when you are finalizing your image, it doesn't show up too much. But 
I hope this was helpful. Again, some of this was tedious. I have a lot of focus stacks on my live streams and I also have that other video that you can watch to help you once you dive into the journey of focus stacking. My biggest recommendation is to never use the auto align feature in Photoshop. I just never get results I want and even when I try to patch it up and fix it, it just doesn't work correctly. So you have to do it manually if you really want all the details in your image looking good. Regardless, I hope that you guys learned something from this and that you took away something. Whether you've already shot focus stacks before or you're just learning, don't be intimidated. It will take some getting used to. You're gonna need to know masking in Photoshop uh, and being able to brush in and out of layers. But other than that, I have a ton of resources on my channel. I have the focus stacking videos that I just told you about, the live stream I just told you about, and I even have other live streams that I'll have linked down below that are all involve focus stacking different types, whether it's a tree that has a bunch of branches in it. I actually ended up using a program called Helicon Focus for that, and it worked wonders, but it doesn't work so great on an image like this one. I tried it, I wish it did, it would have made my life a little bit easier. Regardless, I'll have all of that stuff linked down below. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like the video, and if you loved it, consider subscribing. I'll see you guys again next week, and thank you for watching.